uh, those kind of things. What if someone touches a row and we want to react to that? That's all the delegate. Okay, it's not about the data that's being displayed, it's more like how are we displaying this table and how is it reacting to touches and things like that. So we're going to talk about both of these uh, delegates, the data source and the delegate. Um, the UI table view controller, just to be clear, I showed this a couple slides ago, it automatically wires itself up as the data source and delegate. If you were going to bring out a generic view controller and drag out a table view into it, which you can do, you would have to control drag the data source and the delegate to your view controller yourself. You'd have to hook them up, or in code you could hook them up too, but you have to connect them up. But UI table view controller automatically hooks it up. Um, the data source and delegate are almost always going to be your controller. Right? That just makes sense because the controller's job is to interpret the information in the model for the view, so obviously the controller wants to be the delegate. And again, back to the MVC thing that we did the very first day, this is that blind structured communication between the view and the controller. Okay? Um, the UI table view controller also has a property called table view, which lets you get the table view that's in your controller. So that's nice to be able to do that, so you can configure it and talk to it and things like that. So, uh, that's a nice one. It actually happens to be self.view in a table view controller, which is a little weird. That was a strange design choice, I think, on Apple's part, but it is what it is. Okay, so what are the important methods in this data source protocol? Well, there's really three important ones. One is how many sections are in this table, how many rows are in each section, and then give me a view, a UI table view cell, give me a view that I can use to draw this row. Okay? Obvious, right? These are the three things know how much data there is, and then it just ask, constantly asks you for the data by asking for these, this view, this UI table view cell, over and over. So let's cover the last one first, because that's the most important. It's really easy, the sections and rows, it's just asking you for a number. But the, uh, getting the cell for each row is a little more complicated, so let's talk about that one first. So this is the third method in the uh, data source protocol. And it's called table view cell for row and index path. Okay. It's kind of exactly what you expect it to be called in a sense once you understand that index path is just an object that describes the section and row within that section. So index path, an object that has two properties, row and section. Okay, so that argument is basically just encapsulating the row and section into one object. Um, uh, so, that, so we're being asked here to provide a cell, a UI table view cell, which is a UI view, to draw that row in that section. And we only need this for dynamic tables, okay? Because for a static table, we set all this up in the storyboard, so we don't need, you know, there's no need for the table view to be asking us for this view because it's already set up in the storyboard, okay? This is only for dynamic ones that we have this. Um, and what are the two things we need to do in here? One is we need to create a cell, and then we need to configure that cell. So we're going to talk about those two things separately. First of all, how do we create a, t a cell that we're going to return? Because we have to return a cell here, UI table view cell. And we do that using this kind of funky method called DQ reusable cell with identifier for index path. Okay, now what this does is it essentially goes and looks in the storyboard, finds that identifier, Flickr photo cell. Remember I told you that was an important thing to type in in the storyboard. And it copies that prototype, it makes a copy of that prototype, okay, and returns it. Uh, however, it's a little more sophisticated than that, and the reason it's called DQ reusable cell is that it only creates those things for the rows that are on screen, okay? I might have a thousand rows in my table view, and I don't want to make a thousand views, that would be incredibly inefficient. So I only make nine views. Okay, because only nine rows can fit on, let's say nine, could be 15, seven, four, whatever. However many will fit on screen. I'm just gonna make that many, and as I scroll through my table view, as rows go off the top of the screen, I'm gonna grab that view and put it into a little reuse pool, and then when a new one comes on the bottom, I'm gonna reuse it. So I'm basically just you know, only using the ones on screen, and when they go off screen, I reuse it for a new one that's coming on screen. Does that make sense? So I'm just constantly reusing these things. Okay, that's why it's called DQ reusable cell. But if I don't have one, if there's not one to reuse, it copies that prototype that's in the storyboard using this name. Okay? Questions about that? Yeah. Um, just a quick clarification. You said that um, to access the table view, it was actually self.view. Over here it's table view. Are we looking at something different? Okay. When I said that self.table view is the same as self.view, uh, that's only in UI table view controller. That's an implementation detail. 
that I say because it might trip you up, but we always would use self.table view. We would never use self.view. We couldn't. In fact, if we tried to call DQ reusable cell with an inner on self.view, the compiler would complain because self.view is a UI view. It doesn't implement that method. Self.table view is a UI table view. It does, okay? Good question, though. All right, so anyway, this is how I get a cell. So I'm getting a UI table view cell. Remember, that's the subclass of UI view. And now I need to load it up, basically. And the way I load it up is I just go look at the documentation for UI table view cell and I see what I can do in there. And one thing, for example, is it has a property called text label, which is a UI label. That happens to be the thing that draws the word title in those subtitled cells. Remember, we saw the if the cells there said title and subtitles, that's the thing that draws the subtitle. So I just get that, cell.text label. I set its text to be some text that's coming out of my database at that row and section. Okay? And I can call anything I want here. There's also cell.detail text label dot text. That allow me to set that little subtitle. I can set the image. There's all kinds of things I could do. Uh, I can even subclass UI table view cell and put my own views in there and create outlets to them and go crazy with what's in each row. Uh, of the table view cell. So it's infinitely expandable. But basically we just set this UI table view cell to look like we want based on what information is coming out of the database that matches that row and section. And that's it. Okay, and then we return the cell and the table view uses it to draw that row. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, so that's it. So now the only other two ones are how many sections and how many rows and that's just these two methods, number of sections in table view. If you don't implement number of sections in table view, it actually has a default, which is one. <laughs> okay? So if you don't implement number of sections in table view, it's all one big section. Okay? That's kind of the default. Uh, the other one, how many rows are in each section, it's going to ask you that repeatedly for every section. There's no default there, so this one's required. You must say how many rows are in each section. If you only had one section, you could obviously just answer that. That's what we're going to do in our demo. But you could have multiple sections like you will with your homework when you have the country. Some countries will have two cities in them. Some countries will have 12. And you'll have to answer this question correctly for every section. Okay. What about a static table? You don't have to do any of this for a static table. You don't have to do self row and index path. You don't have to do number of sections in table. You don't have to do number of rows and sections. It's all just taken care of for it's care of you by UI table view controller. So static, just edit in storyboard how you want it. Don't worry about any of this stuff for that. Okay. Um, there's a bunch of other methods in this data source protocol that we're not going to talk about. They're mostly about getting the titles of the headers and the footers. You will need the one that returns the name of a, the string for a header because you're going to have a header, a section header. In your, this is going to be the name of the country uh, in your homework. Uh, there's also, these tables can be edited. Rows can be removed. They can be moved around, okay, change the order, all that stuff. It has to be kept in sync with the model, and so there are methods in the pro data source protocol that let you know when things are happening in the rows moving and deleting, so you can keep it up to date with your model. Question. Um, is number of rows in section uh, something that's the same for, for every section? But you declare okay, so the question is, is number of rows in section the same for every section? And the answer is absolutely not because some countries only have two, two cities, so you'd return two when it asks you about that section. Some countries would have 10, so it would, you'd return 10. So you're going to be asked that question repeatedly, once for every section, and the answer could be definitely different for each one. Um, okay, so that's it for the data source. All right. Uh, the other one is called UI Table View Delegate. And this one, again, is more how we're going to display this table, not what the data is we're displaying. And uh, it's common, though, for the data source and the delegate to be the same object, namely your controller, okay? Because the table view is part of the view. It's just a view. Table view is a UI view. It's part of your view. So data source and delegate usually your controller. Um, the delegate lets you observe what's going on in the table, too, okay? All these will do this, did do that. Um, and one especially interesting one is user did select a row, <laughs> okay? So the delegate protocol can tell you when the user tapped on a row. Now, we're going to mostly, when a user taps in a row, we're going to segue, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. But it's also possible to implement this method in the UI table view delegate protocol called table view colon did select row at index path. Exactly what you think. It tells you the index path, in other words, the section and row, where something was touched, and you can do something. Now, what would you ever do in here? Well, if you're segueing, you wouldn't do anything in here. But if you're on the iPad, 
when you touch on a table, maybe the thing you're updating is already on screen. You're not going to segue to it. It's already on there because the iPad's so big, it's got room to do that. And we'll see that in the demo today. We're going to have uh, an image where we click on a table row and it shows an image. And that image viewing thing is already going to be on screen. So we don't want to segue to it. It's already there. So we just need to update it. And now we're going to do that in this method. So you can see how that works. Um, Remember that little circled eye that I showed you earlier, that special detail disclosure thing? When you tap on it, it won't do what the row normally does. Okay, if you tap somewhere else in the row, the row will do its normal thing. But if you tap on the little eye, instead it will call this method in the UI table view delegate protocol, call table view accessory button tap for row with index path. Okay? And it does exactly what you might think. It tells you the index path of the little circle that was pressed. So this is usually where you would provide some ancillary information. Okay? You wouldn't do the main thing that the row does. You would go do something related to what's in that row, but different. Question? Sir, you can click on the row or you can click on the button in the row? Yeah, so the question is, can I click on the row or on the little I? And the answer is yes, and different things would happen. Uh, so clicking on the row would segue or would call that previous slide, did select row with index path. Clicking on the I would call this method. Uh, there's lots and lots and lots of other delegate methods, probably over a dozen, maybe 15 of them. Um, they also have to do with handling the rows, uh, editing of the rows, but more the graphical, how it happens graphically and animations of it. Uh, not, as, not the data that's involved, but just how it, it's going on on screen and copying and pasting rows and notifications for when things move, all kinds of stuff. So I'll leave that to you to go look up. You won't probably need much, any of that for your homework, but it's good to you know, familiarize yourself with that protocol. So let's talk about segueing from cells. So how do we set up a segue? Well, we just control drag, of course. So here's a cell, and I just control drag from that cell to some other view controller. And let's say I make it a push segue, right? I'm going to put this stuff in a navigation controller. It's going to be a push segue, and it creates a segue. Now, what's interesting about this is that that's a prototype cell. It's going to be copied many, many times. So in prepare for segue, how are we going to know which cell we're segueing from? Because if we're going to prepare that view controller on the right, the big blank white view controller, we got to know what data to prepare it with, right? Because it depends on which row they clicked on as to how we're going to prepare it. So let's look at prepare for segue uh, in the case of a table view. Okay, so it's the same thing, prepare for segue colon sender, but now that sender argument, which we've been ignoring so far, matters. That sender argument is the UI table view cell that was clicked on. Okay? And sometimes it's really nice to know the index path of that thing, you know, the row and section, because usually you're looking up in your model by row and section. And so there's this really important method called index path for cell in UI table view, and it'll tell you the index path for a given cell. So we almost always, in the prepare for segue sender of table views, do this first line is almost always index path equals self.tableView index path for cell. Now we have the index path. We can look it up in our model. We can prepare the thing we're segueing to, and off we go. OK, any questions about this? Otherwise, it's normal segue, normal segue. Uh, OK, uh, spinner. So remember in Imaginarium, we spin when we're waiting for the 